Whatever. happening everyone it is friday night airbrush down dirty tricks who are having a few issues getting things rocking on time but facebook is still bogging down it looks like so yeah it's just saying it's saying live video is starting but it's not actually starting well whatever i'll keep it there but if it doesn't load if it doesn't load facebook you can just close the window and they are out of it so whatever let's see who we got in here let's see we're gonna hit record and we're gonna get this shindig started uh, hey carl no yep not good but hey it's going now actually i gotta bring this camera down just a little bit more i think sorry about that let me get this adjusted I was messing with these today a little bit. Ah, okay. Is Facebook still offline or no? Yep. It's not working? It's not working. You can try to reload it, but... Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. we got 34 people in here. How's it going, everyone? Happy Friday night. Hey, Carl. Hey, Michael. Rogelio. If I said that right. If I didn't, sorry. Olin White. Donald Beller. Teresa Justine. Thank you all for popping in. Make sure you hit them likes, subscribes, all that fun stuff. And uh, sure, what we're going to try to pull off tonight. We'll see if this will happen. <laughs> uh, in the continuation of what we started at the beginning of the year with the Woolly Mammoth, and that started leading into talking about that it was Manny from Ice Age, and we kind of went down the rabbit hole. And now, last week, we did the Sabretooth, which I forget the Sabretooth's name. Uh... Oh my god. Ah, anyway. Diego. Diego. We, we did Diego last week. And uh, was it Diego? I think so. Was it, I don't know. It was something like Something that. like that. And so that led to Sid. My plan was to do like kind of a hybrid giant prehistoric sloth skull realism mixed with Sid. Nothing had worked. Nothing I could do at all worked. So that was kind of yesterday's creative block and uh, just kind of bailed on it and just didn't happen. So what I did is, let me uh, bring up my multi here. So we're just going to do good old Sid with a continuation from last week. A continuation from last week which has uh, Sid with the, uh, the fangs or the tusks or whatever you want to call them of the, uh, the saber tooth. And so we're going to do this on a black and gray panel. Uh, so let me show you what I got going on here for the panel. Mm. Hello, Cody. Awesome. Okay. So what I did here, I have, it was a white aluminum panel. This is kind of a smaller one. This is a 9 by 12 panel. Just so you can see here, we got 12 by nine and I got about a quarter inch a little quarter inch just maybe a half inch tape edge uh, it's white and then it's like a blue gray under here so what I did is I took a little I took the uh, Kratex Audubon sealer gray I put a few drops of blue in it, a few drops of black and got to this and while I got that on we'll talk about the colors that we're using tonight to do this all black and gray piece which is going to be these right here. So if you guys want to do a black and gray on gray or anything like that, these are the colors I typically use. Um, so 
my reduction that I'm using tonight, the reducer I'm using, and I use on most of my feeds, is four to one. It's four parts 4011 reducer, four parts 4020. And then I'm using the, the sealer. And then for the colors that I'm going to be doing all the tone work, I have opaque white. I have uh, the gray from the uh, grayscale set. I have neutral number one and neutral number two, and then black candy. I mixed in a couple little blue of various just to kind of throw in, but none. You'd have to kind of cocktail your own. It doesn't really show up well on camera. So that's what we're using for colors tonight. Get rid of that and bring back up the reference. And yeah, so you can see the pencil marks on that black and gray. Yep. Yep. They are already done. So what I did today, um, you know, because this is a live feed, I got two hours. Um, I already pre-drew the image on there. Well, I pre-transferred it. And I've talked about this in many videos, so we, everyone kind of knows the drill if you've been watching. Super soft 8B pencil. I actually did it live last week. Just back side of the paper. Yeah, I do two crisscrosses back and forth. And then I just take a um, paper towel and just kind of smear it out, smooth it out so it's not um, super, super um, chalky. Because you touch it, it'll get like prints everywhere. And that way the lines are very light. Uh, I like this technique better than most graphite papers, even better than the Sorel. The Sorel paper, for me, lately, it's so wax it's not waxy in a bad way as far as it'll ruin your paint. I just don't like the way it leaves such a heavy mark that doesn't really go away well. So I kind of stopped using Sorel or transfer papers. I just kind of do my own um, just by doing this technique. And then just transfer it on with a pen. And that way the image is there. Well, I'm going to do freehand. What we're going to do tonight, we're going to do a mix. We'll do some freehand. We're going to do some paper cut. And I want to kind of talk about a way to do paper cut that um, a lot of you guys probably haven't really done this technique. I mean, we've all done it by taking pictures and just kind of cutting the shapes up and doing stuff like that. But I want to show you a nice little trick. Let me switch out to this camera here. We'll switch to the big one. So, if you see this image here, let me zoom in. This is just an actual... I can actually zoom in now, which is nice, without having the screen blow up on me. Uh, makes it handy. Ken, why don't you try Facebook again, see if it pops on. It is. It's still... Still spinning? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll just shut it off then. Bye, Facebook! One more time. Um, so, and you can see how I've kind of drawn some shapes and things like that. But we've all done the paper cut, or a lot of us have done the, or seen the paper cut technique where you cut out the shapes. To make it easier for yourself, if you go into Photoshop or a program like it, uh, Photoshop actually has it on there, which makes it super easy. Um, if you convert it to a black and gray, so just a grayscale image, and so when you go to image, and you go to, I think it's image, adjustment gray it takes all the color out so it's just a black and white and then you go to image adjust uh and then it's posterize in the effects but posterize starts to kind of block things out so if you see what this does it just makes larger shapes see how that's smooth this is like using five grays so it only uses five grays. so you can isolate kind of your 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 light tones your two mid tones and your dark Makes it super easy to kind of block out your images. This was up to 10. Uh, so you get 10 different grays. It just gives you more variance. So if you do have to do a lot of blocking out while you're doing paper cut style, this is a great way to do it. Because uh, you can kind of break down a photo and analyze it and kind of see where all your, your mid-tones and gray tones and stuff like that is. Which makes it super nice. All right, so yeah, so the drawing's already in here, as you can see. Those lines are nice and light. You know, like I said, the Sorrel paper tends to leave a really big kind of mark on there, so. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a couple, I'm gonna cut just a couple basic shapes. We'll cut a silhouette out. And typically, the one I cut is the one I transfer from, because I know Wherever my lines are, the lines are going to kind of match up. So let's do this. I'm going to take the drawing panel away for just a sec. 
And we'll put up the cutting mat here. And uh, so let's do, let's do this. We're gonna do the heavy darks and just kind of register them in. You see this done a lot with portraits, especially black and gray portraits. And it's just a way to get a nice registration. So when you want to, when you do want to go full freehand, it's already there. You know what I mean? Like your registration's already there. We got 42 in here tonight. Thank you for all popping in on a Friday evening. So like I said, I'm just going to take these larger black areas that I know what they are. And when I fill these in, this is, we talk about it with stencils quite a bit. I did. I did hit record. Thank you, sir. Um, you know, I forgot what I was just talking about. <laughs> um, let me cut this and I'm sure I remember what I was talking about or trying to make some type of point oh whenever you're doing stencil I've talked about extensively especially when I did my like pack of skulls is the big problem is everyone blows too much paint at the beginning. Um, the rule you should always think of is you can always add, but it's not fun to take paint away. So, so keep it light. And it'll make your life a lot easier. You know, so right now I'm just getting my darkest shapes out. Now, like I said, I could be using this one here. Um, but I'm, I'm using it for reference, but this one I'm kind of using because I want to have the, um, all the silhouette cuts. So it all lines up with my drawings. And listen, you shouldn't be blowing too much paint here anyway, so it doesn't have to be super exact. It's really just for registration, and that's really the real key. Is just register your basic shapes where your main darks are and in a lot of cases in a lot of the jobs I do that's not like a you know kind of a like a how-to it's about all I do and then I just freehand from there honey you are always one of the first ones to go in so I got a special new sound for you <laughs> yes, the fangs are icicles. Thank you, honey. Like I said, you know, I say all the time with the stencils, the stencil should just be used, or any of these techniques, you just use it for registration. And then you come back in and you either freehand it or remask it or whatever the final look you want in tone. That's where you want to be working. But most of my videos, you know, we've done skulls, we've done this, we've done that. These techniques all kind of go hand in hand. So, you know, they're just tools in a toolbox. They're ways to get to you know, kind of the end result or just kind of get you started. And kind of just get things kicked off. Like, you know, one of our good friends we all watch is, <clears throat> and I've had the pleasure of working with a bunch, Steve Leahy. You know, Steve's definitely a big proponent of the paper cut when you do the micro stuff. Um, and I've seen Steve do it without a net completely freehand as well. You know, using techniques is not saying, oh, that's the only way you can do it. It's a means to an end. Um, especially, you know, this is not my original, so it doesn't really doesn't hold the case. But a lot of times if I draw something on paper... 
or draw it digitally, come up with a concept and do all that, you know, from scratch. I don't want to have to redraw it and recreate it. I can, I did it the first time, but it's not as efficient. So, you know, when you're doing, it's that fine balance between, you know, commercial art for a client and just art for art's sake because you want to do it a certain way. Calvin Jones! Turn volume up on the Mac. Use the keyboard. Thank you, sir. We'll get the louder one. <laughs> I wish I could do some depending on some pieces. Hey man, thank you for buying those and hope you enjoy them. I hope you find a good use for them. Uh, I still love using them. You know, I did the video last year with all the skulls, so that was fun. I still got to edit those into smaller videos. Just really haven't had time to do the editing, which I really should, but I have not. Um, so, but I appreciate everyone's support, whether it's you know buying some of my stuff, buying some downloads, super chats here, buck here, whatever. I appreciate it all because it all grows the whole channel and makes everything a little bit, you know, more. Uh, a little bit easier to do. All right, so let's do this. We're gonna get him in here. We'll get him in. We'll zoom the top-down camera. So you can see a little better. I'll reposition that. I got the colors in the camera to get a little better today. I think this this camera is this was the top one here that I'm using. This guy, this is an older one. It's just an Amazon kind of cheap cam, and I think the either I think it's wearing down because it's it's the colors aren't quite a bit. So what I had to do is the lighting that's to the left to the on my right side. I had to like change that light into a wicked green, like kind of mint green color to balance them out because it was super blue. So I just had to play with a lot of the lighting. Um, but we got it to work. It looks pretty good. They look almost even. Not as bad as last week. Okay, last week was... Yeah, the, last week was before, the week before was really... Was really a super blue. This week not as... This week started out that way, but I was able to dial, dial a lot of it in. So what I'm doing is I'm lining this up. And I'm just going to use... So this is the neutral one, which is a darker one, but I'm not going to, which is going to be the final black, and I'm not going to spray it 100%. I'm just going to mist it in. Because he is pretty furry, so all these darker areas would be nice. Be nice just to, to go in there freehand and just kind of touch it up after. But you'll see this starts to give me just a little representation of where the dark shapes are, okay? Just helps a little bit. And even in here, I'm going to use, uh, well, this is one of Drew Blair's templates. This is his, um, the, the micro dots. You can actually see how you can see right through it. I wonder if I can zoom in and you can see the template itself. See how small the holes are? So what's cool is the nose has a lot of little texture on it. I'm going to use that in here and just going to blow through. And if, you, if I can zoom in enough, you can see the nose now has like a little bit of texture in it, which is kind of cool. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trying to think what I want to do here. I'm going to do this. I need to make a silhouette because I want to get the background. Hmm. I 
Yeah, it's like a mesh. It's super fine. And he's got a couple different sizes. It's a great template. Yeah, I was able to get a new lens last week, so now I can get out really far. And I figured out some tricks by getting on some forums, and now I can get in super tight, all live, which I wasn't able to do a couple weeks ago. So it's a nice addition. Micro dots ain't what they used to be. I'm not touching that one. All right, so... You know, I'm going to silhouette him and just kind of darken around. And what I do in stuff like this, I either shake the knife back and forth or I just do this. Let's see if I can zoom in on that. And I learned this from Corey St. Clair. I think you call it cactus cutting, like a cactus. So you just kind of, you're more picking away at it. That way you end up with like a really nice fuzzy edge on the stencil. See that? It makes it more, you know, more natural. So we're just going to cut his silhouette out. Hopefully he stays fully together. Or I'll just cut one of the other ones. The nice thing about doing paper cut, just print a whole bunch. Yeah, whenever you're doing like fur or creatures and you gotta just kind of do a background silhouette or you want to do a highlight because this can work both ways um, as you'll see don't just cut a straight line and then have to work with it after you can start it out kind of rough and it's you know makes it perfect it just kind of makes it a really cool look see that Oh, Chad's. Yeah, hanging Chad's. <laughs> but now I can kind of line that up with my, because this is, again, this is the same one I drew it off. So all my cuts are kind of going to line up. They should line up pretty well. Because they're already sprayed, I can register those. And then just use some magnets. The nice thing about the Vision Air is it's the steel underneath. This is good enough for these panels to kind of hold. And for this, I'm going to use my lighter gray, which is the neutral two. If you look at the paint list here, that'd be the second one over, which is a neutral two. And of course, that's by Createx. It'll bring up all the products I tend to use. And like I said, I don't want to spray too dark. And if I get some in here, it's just going to aid to it being darker. And this will be good for when I freehand stuff out later. But I'm not trying to be like just super dark. It's just. It's registration, it's not a lot. Okay, so watch when I pull this off, 
you should just see a nice kind of halo around it. So you need just a little bit, and you know, you can just kind of freehand off it too, and just keep it loose. But these techniques are great when you're just doing, uh, oh, thanks, Calvin. Yeah, I was able to do that today before I got on. I just went on the website and made a lower thirds layer for you guys and figured it'd be a lot easier. So if you want to know the paint, it's all right there. Oh, thanks, Cody. Yeah, it, it's... You know, it's, and when you first see someone do it, you're like, oh, yeah, why did I think of that? You know, it's, it's, it's like, duh. <laughs> but sometimes the obvious just isn't, just doesn't, doesn't show. But now it's all starting to kind of come together a little bit. I can even... You know, I can just keep dissecting this and just start building other shapes, like inside the mouth. So watch this. We'll, we'll get inside here. We'll do that. And since we got the pupils, we can do the rest of the eye, the iris, and register that in. Yeah, the illustration colors are great. That's mostly what I'm using here. Is the illustration grays, the illustration opaque, and then I am using candies just because as an automotive guy I love candies. I just love the way they work and I may use them tonight. I mixed them up just in case. Um, I may use them at the end because they kind of have a bluish and purple tone, the ones I mixed. Uh, so I can kind of play with that a little bit. Again, I'm just kind of working everything and just blocking in my shapes. You see, just that's enough to block that in. Now watch on the, the nose. We the nice thing about using kind of destructive method of the paper is I can kind of fold it back. Put in some tone there. And just kind of start building the character. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit these mid kind of grays, and then I'm gonna go with the white and just kind of get everything blocked in that needs to be blocked in. You know, so even here there's kind of like a delineation of the fur to kind of give them a little bit of a neck. You know, a little twist. So watch, it's going to go in here. And we'll get him. We'll cut this tooth. I'm going to cut here. These are all things I can kind of fold back and kind of just play around with a little bit. And Whatever I need to do just to kind of build my shape. It's like doing a sketch. And it's just going to you know, help ease it in. Oh, America, the CI paint is amazing. Oh, the Createx Illustration colors. Yeah, so the Createx the Illustration is designed to be soft. And stay soft for a while so you can do, and we'll talk about some of the, the tricks of, um, like, scratching and things like that. So, yeah, they are, they are, can be very delicate. If you don't want to be that delicate, you can do what I did, is just put a little 4030, or in my case, the 4053 gloss UVLS clear in it. That'll make it more durable, 
but you will lose the more of that you put in the less race ability you'll get so you know there's a balance there so here I'm going to stick him back on Whoop. and we'll just do a little of this Use my reducer. Okay, so Facebook never popped on, huh? No. So now I'm just going to go a little here. I'm going to come back in here a little bit. But I'm not doing a lot. Just little bits, just for registration. I'm going to fold him back. Okay. So I mean, so now, now you're starting to see like more definition and things like that, and where the character actually kind of, you know, is. And I think that's kind of enough of this one right now. I'm going to leave this aside because I don't want to cut too much and lose it. Um, I can work the rest in. But well, I do want to get the claws registered. So hope everyone had a good week. This week. I'm juggling a bunch of stuff around here. silhouette out the shape of the claw or the toes of the sloth again purely for registration and I'll probably go back in and cut for some highlighting I want to thank everyone for popping in. I want to thank everyone for the super chats. I'm going to hold him in place. Yeah, this is the funny pick I found of him with the icicle, big icicle fangs. Just always fun. And I just tweaked it a little bit and all right. So now we can do here. I think drawing is all should have used. <laughs> it would be funny to like dub over John Wick and have him <laughs> do that voice. Michael, thank you for coming in, being a part of it. And all you guys who have helped out and bid and like I said bid and super chat and all that. All that stuff really, really just helps a lot. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this white. This is straight illustration white. And this is where I want to start freehanding some of the brightest whites. Because what I'm going to do is I'll tone them back in with some gray. Um, and then I'll bring them back in at the very end. Okay. So, you know, I can kind of be loose here. Which is fun. Um, it, it kind of starts you able to be to start doing your freehanding and see how much masking you really need to do. 
Let me zoom in a little bit more and see. If you do water instead of reduce, it will make it easier to erase. No, um, actually it doesn't. So I would stick still stick with the reducer. It actually makes it a little. I find it makes it a little gummier because it doesn't really kick over the paint. You gotta remember, reducer is not just thin and thinning it. What the reducer does, it thins the paint properly, but it also activates the resin. Um, because it's not just water, and it's it starts out as deionized water, and then there's kind of a bunch of other stuff mixed into it. Um, and what that does is it drops the pH of the paint. And as that pH drops, it starts to cure. Okay, so if you do water, you don't know what's going to happen to it because you don't know what the water is in your area. If you use distilled water, you could probably get away with it. But I don't know if it will slow it down. A lot of times it makes it not dry well at all. Pretty much, the only thing I use for water is cleaning at the end. I like flush with water. And then um, I do a little isopropyl alcohol. And that's it. So you can see right here, the nice thing about doing a gray panel is now I can go with white and I can kind of start brightening things up. And I can really look at my reference image you guys can kind of see it down below. I think I can actually bring up a bigger one. Yeah, I can bring up a bigger one there. And I can hit these bright, and then I can tone them back out after. So they're not quite as, as bright, but I get that nice soft tone in here. And I can really kind of play around with like highlighting right above the nose bridge and kind of getting... Getting that in. Now what I could have done is made this like a mid-tone gray. Um, yeah, so it's it's so Carl, basically the, the 4030 is a clear, but it's also it based what the 4030 and the 4050 does, it converts it from a traditional water-based acrylic almost to a water-based polyurethane. Okay, so it changes the way the resin kicks over and cures. And that'll change the dynamic of the paint, so it becomes a little bit more rigid and and harder. So the erasability goes down, but it's, you know you can kind of play with the effects how you want it. All right, let's get in here. Do this one. And I love when the white is flowing right. You know, sometimes you get those days where it just doesn't want to doesn't want to cooperate. I don't care what brand you use. Sometimes the white's good, some days it's not. And when it's good, go with it. Just paint. Alley oop, yeah. So what I do is for so my final cleanup to really like flush anything out, I just use isopropyl. The isopropyl will it basically strips anything out. Um, or you can mix a little water and isopropyl alcohol. You can use a reducer as well, but a lot of times the isopropyl is a lot cheaper. Let's see, now I can start highlighting those teeth. And I really want to, you know, play with the eyes, and I'll do that in a little bit. Now the nose, I'm going to do, let me see if I can get really close to this. I love having this new lens, I can get a lot closer. Instead of doing like just a, like a highlight like this, I'm gonna go in and just, see how I'm just rocking that trigger back just a little bit. And just, cause I wanna get that like texture on this highlight, like his nose has texture. And like in here, I 
you can come in with this you can mid tone a little bit so it's hard to see through so what I do is if I'm going to use this and kind of place it in I'm going to put my airbrush kind of where it needs to be and start kind of moving it then I'll put the stencil there and then spray through it just to get that little texture All right, let's do these eyes. And the nice thing about the opaque, it'll start to erase any lines. But I have it reduced just... Oh, sorry guys, you couldn't see that there on that one. Just enough where I get coverage but I get really soft flow, and I don't need to use a hard stencil, because I don't really want a super hard edge there anyway. And I can fan this out. And just slowly work that highlight so if you look if you look at the reference you can see that bright highlight right around there I'm gonna skip you know you can you can kind of softly register the glints in there but don't go full bright weighted yet because you can save those for the end And now, aside from stencils, you can just kind of wherever you're gonna put hair. So you could erase you if you could do the full erasability, which if I didn't put the gray down, you could erase the background um, and get these like streaks. I'm just gonna go in with a lot of little dagger strokes right now and just kind of softly put them in if you have trouble doing this another trick which looks really good as well is you can take a stencil like this or Tommy Ham's like small dots and if you move let's see if I can get you really close I'll go full screen on you so watch if you take a stencil like this, or something with a really small opening, like Gerald Mendez's textures, and if you spray and move at the same time, so if you want kind of little fur strokes, if you spray and move like this, I go together, together, together. See how you get little hair? And if you use a template that's really small, you'll get really really small delicate hairs it's hard to see but if you can't do little freehand daggers that's another way to do it uh, I think if you just practice the daggers enough it's probably easier to do it that way to just freehand them in especially like I said once the paint's flowing I'm just putting this kind of mid-level hair in there for now. Keep changing direction.
And if it stops flowing, you might have to just pull the trigger back and clear a little bit because you might be getting a little dry, a little tip dry when you're doing fine hairs like that. And you may even reduce a little bit. This is the Micron. Yep, this is the Takumi. You could use an Eclipse and get pretty close to it as well. Um, or the HPC Plus will probably do a better job as an in-between if you can't afford or don't own a Micron. Um, but I, you can get really tiny with just the Eclipses and some other brushes with bigger needles. It's just a matter of getting the reduction right and just kind of feathering that trigger ever so slightly. And it's a pain with white, no matter what brush you're using. But this will, like I said, this will complete the trifecta of the Ice Age. I don't think I'm going to do scrap. Maybe I'll do scrap down the road. But I think next week I'd like to move on to something a little bit more custom painterly. You could, you could do an Ikron. A what? The thing from Avatar the Flying Thing. Oh, yeah. That would be really cool. Or the horses. The dire horses. Cool. My daughter's trying to kill me with very difficult things to do. They're cool though. But this is what I like about working on gray. And when I used to do skull work, not when I used to, but when I do skull work, I used to always just use black and white. Especially on a black bike or a white bike, I would do all the de all the dark work with black on a white bike, or I would take a black bike paint job and start everything with white. Now I start everything in mid-gray. I build my tone in mid-gray. And then I can carve dark and light after that. It's so much nicer to work that way. So much nicer. Now the other thing I can do... That's because I'm pretty sure I saved everything along the way. I got him. I got him. have my pieces what else our daughters for yeah exactly exactly Aha. so what I can do now is I can take the opposite side of the stencil I used to bring in the light side of him here. And you can come off those edges with a little bit of small daggers. Just kind of bring in that. In that claw, and on this side, can you use a pl uh, plotter without using a computer? No. You know, plotters require a computer, just like a, just like a printer. So yeah, yeah, Michael, you need to have a computer. Now plotters run very simple programs, so you don't need like a mega powerhouse computer. Um, the files that plotters typically use are very, very, very small. So like most of the files are 
that I do are like kilobytes. Some are a couple megabytes. They're very tiny files. So you don't need a big powerful computer to do a lot of a lot of that work. But you do need a computer. Yeah, no, I don't know if a plot of that works from a phone or like an iPad or anything like that because they just don't have the drivers to drive the cutters. Um, there may be some, there may be a way to drive like a Cricut type machine, a Cricut cutter or a, um, or a Cameo Silhouette from a phone. I don't know. It'll probably be, it would probably be an Android phone if anything, if anything would work. It wouldn't be. I can almost guarantee it wouldn't be a iPhone, just because of they're kind of locked down for stuff like that. Yeah, actually, Carl's Carl's right. You can get a laptop for for less than the cost of a phone. So you don't need a big powerful laptop, especially like depending on kind of plotter you have. Some of the software that comes with the plotters are pretty, pretty, um, pretty low power as far as they don't take a lot. Even Adobe Illustrator, as long as you're not doing like massive files, like the size of a like a house, like to scale, you'll be fine with most of the rudimentary laptops. But you definitely want a laptop, like either a Mac or a PC. Don't get like a, don't get like a Google. What's what's the, the Chromebook. Chrome? Don't do Chromebooks or stuff like that because those won't. Those I don't think they have any software capability, or at least I've never come across anyone using one. Not to say it's not possible, but I've never seen it. If someone knows better, feel free to answer that. So if I go back to that that low pixelated image I did, this kind of helps me isolate all the light colors or where all the major darks are. So like you see right here, I'm just going to run bright right down here and then a little bit off to the edge. And that's kind of it for the, for the purest white for right now. There you go. So you can run a Cricut, which is a small plotter, uh, from a Cricut uh, or iPad. I never have. Um, well, I guess that wouldn't that would make sense because Cricut software is web based, so it's online. Um, so yeah, I'd imagine you can from that. Yeah, I just bring. I don't. I just bring my laptop. Um, and go from there. And a lot of times what I do when I'm on site, um, so a lot of times what I do when I'm on site, I design all the cut files ahead of time, obviously, before I go, uh, which is on my, my computer here. And then um, I save all those onto a thumb drive and I just go onto a smaller laptop and I bring a plotter to the, the job site if I'm going to need it. Uh, I'll go from there. Yeah, so I haven't tried their mobile platform either. You know, I typically stay away from the mobile stuff because I've never needed it. Um, but I'm sure there's solutions for it. I'm digging the way he's coming out. It's kind of fun to do. I haven't painted a character like this. Oh. And CG characters are always weird to airbrush because it's... They're like a mix of like... All computer generated 
like super smooth shape, which airbrushing can really lend well to. But sometimes it's hard to kind of, they start looking too cartoony, especially if you if you make the mistake of doing too many lines. Yeah, I'll have to try, I have an older silhouette, I think it's a Model 2. I'll have to see if I could run it from like my iPhone or a phone, because I've just never done it. But if, if it does, if it does, that'd be great. Like I said, on a job site, just bringing a small craft cutter and a phone or an iPad versus a computer. Yeah, so I'm all for making things easier. Especially when you're in a commercial setting, you're not getting points for, you know, spending all the time to do it, you know, fully freehand, unless you are, then, then you do it that way, but. Why don't you do, I don't know if you meant to say Groot. That could be fun. Groot would be actually really fun. You know what? We'll do a Groot this year. We'll have to do a small Groot because yes. because we got the new Guardians coming out this year. Or baby Groot, but not like in like the not in the pot, like from the yeah. shorts. You could do him with the flat with the leaf dress. Oh my God! Yeah. I love that one. Yeah, I grew, I'm a Guardians nut, so yeah, I'd be more than happy to do that. So this is the other thing with Gerald's template. The, this was with Texture Effects 3, this is the small one. The swirl pattern, this is great for kind of getting in like the mid-level hair. Because it's just, you gotta go back over it later. So it's just more of the underpainting, it just gives it something fun to look at. And you can kind of play with different directions. Yeah, sometimes you do. Now, firstly, depending on the job, I try not to reinvent the wheel once I'm on site. I try to have that all worked out ahead of time. Uh, but it depends on the job. Sometimes you're developing as you go, so. But like my plotter that I have here, they're not very big. They're pretty easy to just bring around. Or if you have like a like an SUV or something, I've done it where I've just I've set it up in the back section of the truck. You know, open the lift gate and just had a little work area. Oh, thanks, Scott. I appreciate that. Yeah, this was fun. You know, um, I said I haven't painted this style in a while. I always get kind of nervous when I got to paint like fur or creatures and things like that, where it involves if it involves a lot of little subtle shading. Um, sometimes it's just hard to to pull it off on camera and like explain it, or if things aren't going quite right, how to get you know. So it's always that kind of a little bit nerve-wracking part of doing this live. Um, I 
And I'm usually trying to make sure it's going to be done in two hours if possible. And if people want to bid on it, they can bid on it. You know, this one is just kind of doing it to do it. And we'll see what happens. If you look at the like color photos of them, you can see this like you can see some lip texture. In here. Yeah, I had never messed with this first the first time, so I should probably grab that one. That is a good one he did. I've just used the micro dots and just move them around. You know, I just like doing this. And Gerald's have always worked really well for me as well. But Drew's got a lot of beautiful stencils out there. Some little ice dripping off. All right. Let's see. Oh, Gary. Gary, she's. Got 25. Thank you, sir. Thanks, sir. Much appreciated. I know they're corny, but they're also fun. Alright, so. Where did I get that? So bad with templates. I like fling them around. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, everyone, for the Super Chats. So, like, I want to expand on that kind of shadow of the nose. But his nose has a lot of, like, nose texture. Just, you know, that's where I really like using this template. Voila! You know, I almost want to What am I trying to do here? Yeah, I'm going to take that mid-tone color now. I'm going to over-reduce that a little bit. And this is going just through my Eclipse Plus, HPC Plus. And we'll start doing some of the mid. The mid-tones and see how that goes. And I might switch it to a Micron, depending if I don't like the line consistency coming out of it. This HVC is aren't, aren't quite as tuned, and oh, this one's got a little bent needle, so I might switch it anyway. I oh, got it.
So this is kind of that mid color. Uh, this is neutral too. Now I'm going to switch this one out to my other micron because this is really tight. So when, yeah, when you get down to doing fur, this is where the microns and the, the brushes down that level really start to sing if they're working right. Let me make sure this one's all clean. Go. So this is neutral number two, and I'm actually going to strain this. We've talked about my strainers before. So I actually learned this trick, this little trick from Ryan Townsend, and I never, again, never thought it. Put reducer in your brush first. Then put the paint in there. Now what I do is I do reducer. I put my little handy dandy homemade filter, which is just a pipe fitting, an end fitting, like a flare, with a tobacco screen. And just put your paint through that. You know, it does a few things. It helps kind of mix the paint again. Uh, and if you got any dried chunks, it'll it'll help. Then you can work the paint through. And the nice, the, the the main thing about a micron is not the fact that it's got. I mean, it helps. It has a smaller needle and nozzle. The major difference, and I'm going to talk about this in some other videos, is it's how balanced and accurate all the action is back here. You know, yeah, I use the Micron Takumi first, and this is just the regular Micron SB. So this is the early generation. The Takumi is this one. And they look almost identical, but the Takumi is a lot sh uh, about a quarter inch shorter. Makes it a little bit more reactive. But everything in here is so much balanced that little micro trigger pulls react this needle and nozzle that much better. Yeah, exactly. Faucet adapter with the screens. Basically, similar premise. And what I did is I over-reduced this, so it's pretty transparent, it's pretty thin. I could probably drop the air pressure a little lower, I'm only at 20 PSI. And this is enough to start carving in kind of the middle darks. Not the full dark, but just kind of the mid, you know, the middle tone. I might actually go a little lighter than this, but I don't know if I'll have time, so. Thank you, Gary. I appreciate the support, the collecting, the super chats. Gary can't buy every painting as much as he'd like to. But see, if I go this mid tone, now I can tone, start kind of getting everything toned in. And I'm not doing a lot of lines, I'm just doing shapes. The only time I'm doing lines is like on a direct edge. And, uh, yeah, the, the air chamber is, is, is way better designed. The Creosis I have a similar design. It's a little bit of an older design, but they do a really good job as well. Um, because they're 0.18, everything's got to be super dialed in. Because if they're sloppy, they, they leak a lot of air. Um, and the other key with microns or anything with 0.18 is maintenance. You know, keep them clean. I always beeswax them after I clean them. And that helps... Keep everything working great.
And see, because I didn't go too heavy at the start of that stencil, now I can start going in and really working that. And I could probably sit with this color for 90% of the rest of everything. And just work it and then kind of come in for some final darks and some final highlights. You have a really cool piece. Nice and soft. It's got that nice soft shading, kind of got that CG feel. So, yeah, this is a fun piece. And quite honestly, I wasn't really worried about like selling or monetizing this one because this is a it's not my original piece. This is not my intellectual property. Just for fun. In learning. And I kind of wanted that blue-gray shading, so all my, even the white has a little couple drops of blue in it, and all these grays have a little drop of blue in it. And honestly, I think I do use the blue, yeah, I put a little ultramarine blue in all the colors, just so nothing's pure white or like a solid gray. It's all got a little bit of a cool tone to it. Again, that aids in being able to do that nice slow build. Yeah, he's doing pretty well tattooing from what I gather. Last I knew he was still down in Florida. So I hope he's doing well. I haven't chatted with him in a while. But he's another one where you look, it's a slow, like he builds a nice slow build process. He doesn't rush it. And that's why his tattooing like is taken off so well because he has that same discipline where he can just go in and softly shade it and build it and build it and build it and then it's done you know it's it's funny because you know is that slow is fast fast is slow by working slow and steady you come up with a really nice end result whereas if you go too fast you end up having to keep fighting back and forth back and forth back and forth Yeah, I don't, like, if it's someone's motorcycle that they want a piece of fan art done, I have no problem doing it. Um, I'm not going to do mass production work. And I always will give the credit to the creator. I've done a lot of theme bikes and Walking Dead theme bikes and things like that. And there's a right way to do them and a wrong way. And I've never had any issue with it. Because I'm not, you know, the brands get really rightfully upset when you're mass producing their stuff. A piece of fan art on a customer's motorcycle, they're usually pretty happy about it. Just because if as long as it represents them well and you're not trying to pass it off as your own work. Even with some of my stuff, like I've, you know, I do a lot of lessons there for people to grow and learn from, you know, and they can put them on people's bikes and use the designs and have some things, you know, but I've had some people to remass produce the image or try to remass produce it and sell the stencil. That's not what <laughs> it's for. You know, there's definitely, you know, time to do it and what it's for and 
how it's supposed to be used and things like that. When will we see the return of the Kraken? Oh, like last week's? Yeah, I dug that one up. I gotta, one day I'm just gonna, if I can't do anything, I'm just gonna pull that out and start working on it again. But that was an oldie that I never finished. And I don't even know if the, the video is still there. I'll have to look. Small Gerald Mendez detail stencil. No, 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 no. Well, we could use this one maybe. But I want the swirly one. Yeah, I, you know, I fight that get it done yesterday mentality as well. Um, you know, my background came from starting out doing t-shirts, and that was all fast, 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 fast work. And then you do this stuff, and you slow down. So it's finding that balance, and, you know, kind of where you want it to be. Well, this one's actually taking quite a long time to get through this much of it. This will be a this will be a finish off camera type of deal, but you'll get the gist of it because pretty much at this point, it's just almost rinse and repeat. You just keep going through, and I'm gonna go back through and soften the hair, make it a little lighter. Want to get this nose really situated in the top of the head. Because you see right here, the hairs are a little big. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in with white, or like a, I'll maybe mix these two colors together and just soften this up and make it a little smaller. Um, you could, I could gently go back in and do some of this. And do a little scraping. Try not to get through the gray. Yeah, just how much of that you're going to see is you really want to go that far with it. So yeah, check this out. Just for the iris. So the pupil's pretty dark. This is not the full dark, but I've already lightened inside here. I've already shaded a little bit here. So just watch what happens when you just go a little freehand 
And we'll just put that kind of edge around the iris and how much this, I mean, yeah, the iris. How much that changes the look of that eye. And we'll soften it to the inside a little bit more. Then I'm going to darken under here. Doing that fur, to get up here the lid. Yeah, Sid imitating Diego. <laughs> it's just a funny pick. Oh, I just... I did. But yeah, see, so zoom way out, it looks, you know, it's got that almost CG soft feel. Because I'm not doing cartoon, like, t-shirt line work. Shade under here. Details. You all meme. <laughs> So like right here, it's starting to blend a little bit, but I have one more dark layer that's going to round everything out. So we'll get to that. Give that nose a little texture. So I think I need to light this color up. It's starting to get a little too dark everywhere. So I'm going to add a little bit of my white. Just mix in the cup. a little bit lighter now.
and I can kind of wash over everything because I can bring back that white later and just punch everything out. This is what I'm going to do quite a bit of. <laughs> that is great stencils to work with. They're so versatile and they're just so they have such a unique um, shape about them that they just just works. There's some other great stencils people make out there, but Gerald's just the way he's designed them. It's almost like you can never you don't actually see the pattern repeat that much. Whereas I think the problem with some of the other ones in the market that kind of you try to emulate his or just kind of get in that same genre miss that one thing and it's too repetitive Yeah, I have. I've tried the the low ride trigger, not for me. It works. So what I like about it, if you only work in that front quarter of the tr that front quarter of the trigger pull, they work great. My problem is I work a lot further back a lot just because the pressure and speed I work at. So I find once you go past that twenty five to halfway point, the geometry changes and the trigger for me feels funny. So I, I've never really been a huge fan of it. I like it. They're well made. They're well manufactured. They do a, a great job for the way I pull the trigger. They're not super beneficial. The springs, I don't really go too much for the springs. I have them. I've used them. They're cool. Um, I'm a t-shirt painter. I have fairly big fingers. I can feel there's a difference in it, but once the trigger's down, the trigger's down. Um, and realistically, as far as the up push, even without a spring in there, the air pressure pushes the trigger to the top and shuts it off. So they, again, they, 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 if you, if you can feel the benefit to it, cool, that's awesome. Because there is a slight, there is a difference in using them. It's just whether it benefits you or not. For me, it doesn't really benefit me that much. I've used his, I've used Marissa's, I've used a few other companies that have made different ones. No, I don't have the Hunk Lu one for sale. Um, just because it's just, I just make it as I go. And I am going to do one. I kind of been meaning to do one that's purchasable. Because I have scanned it and vectored it. I just never really... I was going to put it out in like a another Pocket Graphics set mini, and I still might, but it might happen. A little soft shading here, give it that kind of, uh, what's that effect called when it's got the soft focus around it, it's like darker on the edges, I forget what they call it. Oh, a vignette. A vignette. Thank you.
Yeah, it's fun for backgrounds. It does a lot of cool stuff, actually. Calvin, have a good night. Thank you very much. Appreciate the support. Actually, right, so this will be pretty much done by the time the feed's ended. You know, I was gonna start paper cutting the stencil and stuff in here, but there's really no need. Just once I've gotten that rhythm of getting those daggers down and those little kind of textures, and it's just as easy to kind of do it like this and work it in. And kind of keep that, you know, the whole thing about this is not really any like harsh lines. It's just. It's color fills and shapes, and the only lines are like wisps of hair, but you just want to block everything in nice. And Yeah, getting used to the gun, and you know, some nights the paint's flowing great, some nights it's not. And it happens with everything. It happens with urethane, it happens with water base. Some days you just got it, some days you don't. That's some of the reason yesterday just... You know, I was fighting it, and I knew I was going to keep fighting it for the rest of the night, and it was just was not going to end up well. So it was not going to be a good feed for you guys, nor myself. Yeah, then there was the matter of the, the of instead of off misspelling that turned into a, a thing.
yeah, I haven't used the candies and I'm not gonna, this is just gonna be done with the neutral gray illustration colors and some white. Instead a few drops of blue added here and there. Oh yeah, that'd be a fun bike. And I love doing theme bikes in monochromatic like this too. You know, no matter what it is, it just... It's fun to do. Gonna keep going and going. I'm gonna move this down a little. There we go. Michael, thank you for popping in. Much appreciated. So this is that first like dark color I'm gonna use to really get that fur dialed in nice. That'll be the darkest dark. Yeah, a lot of times when I'm about to do this, I actually dump the paint, which I'm gonna do, out of the gun. Especially if it's if the color's got some heavier pigment to it. I'll actually give it a flush. That'll get the needle cleaned off. And I'll actually kind of restrain the paint back through. You know, it takes two seconds. Just give it a fresh, freshening up. Because if it's got a heavy pigment, the only issue with, with gravity feeds, I mean, even side feeds do it because it settles down to the bottom, is if it's heavy pigment, it'll start to settle in that small 0 0.23, 0 0.18. And it'll cause you some issues. But if you keep it all tuned up, Now it'll spray super. And then darken what I want, darken most, and then I'll go in white highlight everything and It'll pretty much be done. I'll get pretty close in the next 15. Right now it's just push and pull. And maybe I go in with the black candy at the very end or straight black and just punch out the very 
darkest dark items. Have a good one, man. Thanks for popping in. You going over to Vamps Lounge? I'll maybe pop over after this as I'm cleaning up. Yeah, judge and bike shows are fun. I enjoy it. Thanks, honey. Get a little bit of more fur texture down the bottom. Get some white highlights in here. And I think we'll be good.
If we started bids earlier, I probably would have let it go. But at this point, it's been more of a fun project to watch and you know, something I'll continue and maybe this I'll look into licensing. Bring out pocket graphics. We'll just tone up the eye a little bit here. Give that nice rim lighting around the nose there, just to punch that out. Get the glint in those eyes. And this one will just look cool all around the house. Even things like this around the studio are nice for customers to see because you can kind of explain soft tone shading, how something's going to look, or if you want to sell like black and white portraits, well, having random people around your house, you can show people stuff like this and just how the tone works and soft shading. Great to have around the studio. Let's see if you can see them. See those little micro dots? They just look great. Just really kind of sells it and I'll darken it one more time afterwards Definitely like and share, people. You know, might even do a little brush work on the, the fangs just to really get them to brighten up, or I'll switch to the wicked opaques and get some really heavy white. Showing up in there. But for all intents and purposes, this is done. Little odds and ends to finish up. Tweak it a little bit. Unmask it. And she'll look cool. Well, he'll look cool. Get these little, little whisker eyebrow thingies highlighted.
just finish up with this headshot kind of full you can see it will unmask it just so you can see it and then I will probably go like I said I'm gonna go in and do some darkening things you know I still gotta darken up around the nose I gotta kind of balance out here and here a little bit I may use a candy black but I don't know I don't think I'm gonna I think I'm just gonna use these colors <laughs> yeah, that's true. Out of my paintings, he was the only extinct one. Gonna use the brush on the edge of these because it'll give it that really crisp feel. Just want to soften up a little bit on that nose edge. Let's see what it looks like. The vignette, the white border. And we're going to call this done. Barring any little tweaks and stuff I do after.
Ah, it's pretty fun. That was a fun piece. Looks really cool. Like I said, I'll do a little bit more tweaking on it. You know, adjust this and adjust that. Just to refine it a little bit more. But I'm digging it. Hope y'all had fun watching this. This is the last one of the kind of prehistoric start to the year. And we're going to call this one done. And thank everyone for hanging with me for the past two hours while I had fun with Sid. And I will see you all next week, next Thursday evening, 8 p.m. Have a good one. Have a great night. Have a happy and safe weekend, everyone. Bye.